In this video, we will be showing the normal anatomy of pterygopalatine fossa where the sphenopalatine ganglion lies. Here you see the lateral view of the skull and the zygomatic arch has been shown there. Now I am removing the mandible. Now my needle is inside the pterygopalatine fossa where the sphenopalatine ganglion lies. Anterior to that is the maxilla and posterior to that is the lateral pterygoid plate or sphenoid. Maxillary nerve travels through foramen rotundum and gives a branch to pterygopalatine ganglion or the sphenopalatine ganglion. This foramen rotundum is very near to the pterygopalatine fossa. So when you are injecting a drug, you should be very careful about the volume. If you inject more than 3 ml of drug, then there is high possibility that drug can enter the middle cranial fossa also. In this video, I am showing how the dye when injected to the foramen rotundum comes out through the pterygopalatine fossa. And if the volume is more, the facial nerve also can be get blocked via the deep petrosal nerve which is a branch of facial nerve. Maxillary nerve travels through foramen In this video, I will be showing how sphenopalatine ganglion block is done under fluoroscopy. Between the two condyles of the mandible, a spinal needle of 22 gauge or 23 gauge is passed and it is directed towards the pterygopalatine fossa. It is considered as a very difficult block under fluoroscopy unlike ultrasound which is comparatively easy. For ultrasound guided sphenopalatine ganglion block, it is preferable to use a high frequency linear probe with a shorter footprint like the one shown. In this video, I will be demonstrating how to do sphenopalatine ganglion block under ultrasound in a skull. Copious amount of jelly is put superior and inferior to the zygomatic arch so that air shadow doesn't obstruct the vision of the ultrasound. Keep the probe over the zygomatic arch and then slowly slide the probe inferior to the zygomatic arch and tilt the probe cranially so that the beam goes under the zygomatic arch. The probe is kept in such a way that marker is on the medial side and on the screen it is on the left side. In plane technique, the needle goes from the medial side and in out of plane technique, the needle goes from the inferior side. It is difficult to go from the lateral side as lateral pedigot plate obstructs the needle entering into the fossa. In this, the probe is directly kept over the zygomatic arch and you can see the hyperechoic line of the zygomatic arch. From the zygoma, the probe is slowly shifted down inferior to the zygomatic arch and then tilted cranially. The structures you see on the left side is a steep hyperechoic area that is the maxilla and on the right side you see there is another hyperechoic area that is a lateral pterygoid plate and in between there is a valley or a fissure that is the pterygopalatine fossa. In plane technique, the needle is passed from medial side of the probe and is advanced parallel to the maxilla until it enters the pterygopalatine fossa. Out of plane, it is always better to pass the needle from the caudal part of the probe so as it is easier to advance into the pterygopalatine fossa. Hello everyone. So today I am going to show how a sphenopalatine ganglion is done. This is just for a demonstration. I have a volunteer, he is our anesthesia technician. So first most important is the ergonomics. You have 
Now I am going to demonstrate on the how the sphenopectin ganglion injection is done on the left side of the patient. The probe which is used is a high frequency linear probe with a shorter footprint. It is L25, you can see that. When I am going to do on the left side, it is always preferable that I stand on the head, head end of the patient because the needle is going to come from the medial side. Now, this is the marker that is going to come on the medial side. So first I will be keeping directly over the zygoma, then slowly I will be taking it inferiorly, then I will be angulating it cranially. When I can see on the screen the maxilla. Now the my approach will be from the medial side. So problem will be that it will be a steep angle. So what I will be doing is, I will be doing a lift off technique. You lift it, lift the medial side of the probe with lot of gel on the medial side and the needle is passed. Now coming to the left side, you can also go for the out of plane technique. That is same way the probe is kept and the needle is going to come from the inferior side. Now I am going to do the right side sinoparitic ganglion. So I am standing on the same side of the patient. For a better ergonomics, just opposite is my ultrasound vision. So same way, my knee, this is my probe. I will be keeping it on the zygomatic nerves slowly. I will be going inferior. Then I will be tilting my probe cranially so that the waves pass under the zygomatic arch and my needle will be coming from the medial side. For a better vision, I will be lifting the probe from the medial line. It's also called lift off technique. And for out of plane technique, from the inferior side, I will be coming in this way. In this the probe is directly kept over the zygomatic arch and you can see the hyperechoic line of the zygomatic arch. After scanning the zygomatic arch, the probe is taken inferior to the zygomatic arch and is tilted cranially so that the wave go goes under the zygomatic arch. On the left side of the screen, you see a curved hyperechoic area that is the maxilla and on the right side of the screen the curved hyperechoic area is the lateral pterygoid plate of sphenoid. In between the two area is the pterygopalatine fossa where the sphenopalatine ganglion lies. Now you can see the in-plane technique. The needle is passed from the medial end and the needle is first hit at the maxilla and then withdrawn and it's going parallel to the maxilla and it enters the pterygopalatine fossa. As the angle of insertion is steep, so you need to have a lift off the medial end of the probe so that better visualization of the needle can be done. 